and if I persisted, would eventually come to a clear running stream, perfect for my dog to wade or drink. Water plants floated along or were attached and bobbed in the bubbling current. Carp and goldfish flashed orange as I picked blackberries overhanging the water in thick, juicy clumps that stained my fingers as I grabbed them. One time, I followed the stream for what seemed like miles until it came to a 12-foot chain-link fence that just let the water run under it. Nothing else could pass. When I saw the electric wire lining the top, I quickly called and clipped my dog to a pocketed leash I had with me. The thick woods and pricker brush bushes pressed against the fence, blocking the view everywhere but where the stream entered. From the water, the view was where Cinderella must meet Beauty and the Beast. The stream led to a very large pond crowded with ducks and geese, some with exotic plumed feathered headdresses and fancy wings and tail feathers. Giant white fairy tail geese, purple and green crested mallards, diving marigansers, spotted loons, and all other manner of unusually patterned fat fowl. Then I saw them, a pair of black swans with dark orange beaks gliding together in perfect unison, their necks each forming half the shape of a heart as they crossed the open water in front of a rose limestone pathway leading to a green and white lawn castle just beyond. I was astounded by the view. It was at my second spying that I heard him yell, this is private property. My heart pounded and I ran as fast as I could, the leash dog pulling me. When I stopped to catch my breath, even though I was most of the long way out, I caught a glimpse of a trim gentleman striding behind me, silver haired, but not too old, in dress slacks and a V-neck sweater. He could have been Jay Gatsby himself. Ahead of me, a strong white dog in the lead. Breathless, I whispered, good girl, go out, go. So it's not that shocking that I run behind dogs with a dog sled. <laughs> I think that was the beginning. <laughs> you did a nice job.